Hello, and welcome to the Application Delivery How-To Series. My name is Matt Adam, and today's topic is how to set up and scale out load balancing in vCenter. The NSX Advanced Load Balancer, also known as Avi, integrates seamlessly with many VMware products, including vCenter, NSXT, Tanzu, and many more. Today's session is specifically on the vCenter integration. With our vCenter integration, Avi has some major advantages. We are able to scale out load balancers elastically on demand, and what that means is that if capacity is exceeded, maybe the CPU is high or the memory is high on the load balancer, or maybe the throughput spiked and we needed more capacity, Avi will reach out to vCenter and spin up a new load balancer VM called a service engine. That service engine will then connect back to Avi and start processing load balancing traffic. And all of this can happen without any human intervention. Let's take a closer look at how to configure the vCenter cloud in Avi. Okay, so what we've got here is basically a brand new Avi controller. So you can see we don't have any configured clouds yet. So go ahead and configure a new cloud here, VMware Cloud. And we're going to use the VMware vCenter integration. Hit Next. And here we're going to put in some credentials and some address information to get back into vCenter. So our vCenter address. And we are going to leave it at a write access. We're not going to be using a no access or a read only today. So let's go ahead and click Next. All right, so you can see it, it uh, discovered our data center here. So we'll go ahead and select this data center. We're not going to change anything else for today. And we'll click Next one more time. And we should be able to populate the networks here. Awesome. So let's go ahead and select our management network for use today. Perfect. And we're going to, we're going to um, use static IPs for the uh, management configuration. So let's go ahead and do our subnet. Okay, and the default gateway in 10, 12.1, and our static range here. And 206.112.145. Okay, so we have our IPs configured, the IP subnet, uh, default gateway, and static IP. So let's go ahead and click Next. And at this point, it's going to configure our cloud. We'll need to give it just a second to turn green. Looks like it turned green pretty quickly. Awesome. So now we should be able to flip over to the Networks tab and see all of our um, different networks that were discovered. Let's take a look at our Avi management. And you can see our configured range here. Perfect. And now we can go ahead and configure our virtual service. Create a virtual. So we'll come in here, create a virtual here. VS1 to create our virtual. And let's go ahead and do a simple um, HTTP application. So we'll do system HTTP listening on port 80. And because we have IPAM, we can come in here and automatically select our address. And on the bottom right, we're going to do a new pool. So create pool. And we'll go ahead and um, we'll do a TCP health monitor. So we're going to click here and we're going to add a TCP. Okay, and then we'll click next here to move to the next page. And we have a couple of different ways we can select our pool member. We can do select servers by network. And at this point, we can basically go in and, and uh, do a quick search on all of the different potential VMs that are running in our environment. And you can see all of the different potential VMs that we can pick from. So in our case today, we're just going to add it by IP address. So we'll do 10.206.115.9. And my port. Click on Add Server, and then we'll click Next here to move through. Now we've saved the pool, and at this point we're good to go ahead and save the virtual service. We'll leave everything by default. So since this is a brand new controller and we just created a virtual, it's going to have to create a service engine first. So you can see it says waiting for service engine to be created on this host. So if we actually jump back over to vCenter, you can see that these new service engines are being deployed as we speak. And as soon as these are up and running, my virtual is going to be able to uh, start taking traffic. So we'll go ahead and pause here for a moment and let these spin up. So the last thing we're going to test here is the scaling out of the virtual. So if we hover over the virtual here and click scale out, you can see it's giving us an option to scale out or create a new one. We're going to scale out to an existing service engine and hit scale out. This will be pretty quick here. It's going to add that VNIC to the new SE. And as soon as this is complete, 
the virtual will now be running on both service engines. And it's that easy. Please check out our other exciting videos at our application delivery how-to series. And thanks for watching.